Azarotha history is recorded in Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Welcome to Azeroth A History, a look into the history of Azeroth and how it pertains to World of Warcraft today. I'm your co-host, Bam Bam Anderson. And I'm your co-host, Wynn Stark, aka Senpai. Um, uh, so, we're, today we're finally going to talk about Vol'jin, because I've been talking about him a little bit every single time leading up to this. Right? The anticipation has just been building and building and building. Yeah, and it's really just because, like, it seems like he's going to be important in Shadowlands, uh, which we'll get into why in this episode, finally. It's going to be exciting. Ooh. I'm going to cry a lot during this expansion. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's, like, good for your skin, isn't it? It's going to be great, but it's also going to be, like, so bad. Yeah, it's it's it'll, it'll be fine. I'll be fine. We'll, we'll be good. <laughs> so, before we get to Vol'jid and why he's going to be important in Shadowlands... First, we're going to go back to sort of the beginning-ish, starting with uh, Senjin. Uh, he was the leader of the Darkspear tribe, uh, which was exiled from the Gurubashi Empire. Um, and he eventually led the Darkspears to the Darkspear Islands. And then what set the Darkspears apart from the rest of the Gurubashi tribes is that they weren't as like savage and ruthless as a lot of the other trolls. Um, which led to the other tribes being very cruel to them. Yeah, that's kind of how that works, unfortunately. Yep. yep. Gee, it's like we're seeing, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not gonna go for the low-hanging fruit today. <laughs> um, so Senjin was a witch doctor, uh, but he encouraged his son to instead become a shadow hunter. Um, and his dream being that the trolls would be led uh, by shadow hunters again, like they had been in the past. Uh, which, of course, Vol'jin did become the troll leader. Uh, he also encouraged, encouraged Vol'jin's best friend, Zalazane, to train to be a witch doctor. Like him. Um, so this kind of led a lot in the tribe to believe that Zalazane would be the next leader. Um, but they were, they both kind of knew what Senjin wanted for the mm -hmm. future, and so, and they both believed in that dream. Um, so the two of them, Vol'jin and Zalazan, were sent to First Home. Um, it's like this, like, dense part of the jungle on the islands, and it's, it's meant to test trolls, um, kind of, like, in their faith, and I think also physically. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, it's home to some of the Darkspear Loa, and it grants either punishments or visions depending on like i guess how bad you were or something i or like how worthy you were okay yeah it's very yeah, right yeah it's very common for shadow hunters to be sent there and sometimes they come back others who venture there don't okay so very dangerous <laughs> right um That's th and quite the uh the ceremony yeah uh they were also sent there much younger than those that would usually be sent there, and they ended up surviving months in the jungle, even though they thought it had only been a couple weeks. Oh, so, like, time moves differently in there. Yeah, I think so. I think that also had to do with, um, they were both granted visions uh, of possible futures for their people, and I think that kind of messed with the, like, their perception of time at the time. Oh, that makes sense. Um, while they were gone, though, uh, Senjin had a vision that came true. The orcs, uh, had arrived on the islands, led by Thrall, who was fleeing Lordaeron and fleeing the war. And then they were closely followed by Kul Tiran, uh, marines. And so, with all that commotion going on, the Naga Sea Witch named Zargira also kind of, like, was prodding the murlocs into a frenzy ended up capturing uh, orcs, trolls, and humans alike and uh, the, like basically with the idea to sacrifice them to the sea witch. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. The, so this is when Thrall was able to escape and he freed a lot of the trolls and orcs, but he didn't get to Senjin in time and Senjin ended up being killed. Oh no. Yeah. Goodbye, friend. All right. New friend or, too. Oh no, no witch doctor for you. Yeah. So then by the time Thrall and the rest of the orcs got back up to the surface of the island, uh Vol'jin had come back uh from his like I mean, I don't want to say, like, vision quest, but that's kind of what the idea is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he, he, yeah, th I think that's a good one. He, he had come back during all of this. Um, and he took over evacuation of, uh, of the Dark Spears as well as the leadership. He pledged his loyalty and service to the Horde uh, to re repay Thrall for saving his people. Um, and then he sent a good chunk of the Darkspear tribe over to Kalimdor with Thrall. Uh, but he himself stayed on the islands to, like, kind of basically just make sure everything there kind of went down well. Uh, until they could finally see how shit was going down. Pretty much, yeah. Like, kind of like the last one down with the ship type, type of idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so he sent Zalazane to kind of, like, he was kind of like his face over there in Durotar while while he while he was actually still on the Echo or still on Darkspear Islands. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a year later, though, he finally came to, uh, with the rest of the tribe to join Durotar. Um, so that's the new home of the orcs. Uh, he he also only showed up after the Burning Legion had been dealt with. So huh, that's like, some convenient timing, right? It's like it's like I don't know. I I, I don't think it's because he. I mean, obviously, I don't think he knew that the Burning Legion was there, but it was. It just happened to time out that way. Um, and then so he brought the Darkspear tribe to uh, this little isle, like patch of islands off the coast of Durotar called the Echo Isles. Um, and it's around here that Vol'jin meets a Pandaren by the name of Chen Stormstout. Uh, so, Pandara, they're pandas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they're pandas who brew a lot of ale. <laughs> oh, I love a drunk panda. <laughs> they're great. Um, and Chen is a brewmaster monk who travels around to make different brews with different exotic ingredients. Um, and the two, kind of, the two hit it off. Chen's kind of friends with everybody. We all love Chen. <laughs> I, I don't know of anybody who doesn't like Chen, and if you don't like Chen, we might have some problems. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Yeah. Um, Chen helped the, helped, uh, the Dark Spears as they were hit with another threat, because Dalen's Proud Moor's fleet comes through again. Uh-oh. <laughs> so they attack the Isles. Uh, Vol'jin and Chen and a few others uh, helped to evacuate the island. Um, and then, so they go back to Argamar. And then, eventually, uh, Dalen's fleet moves on to Theramor, which is where all that stuff with Jaina happened. Um, Vol'jin led his people back to the Echo Isles once it was safe. And now we get into some more bullshit again. <laughs> the Dark Spears are... I, I feel really bad for them, because it's just like, it's, it's like just thing after thing after thing, and none of it's good. <sighs> Zalazane, <laughs> Fulgen's best friend, I'm gonna remind you, he, so, along the time that he was essentially the face of Vol'jin in Durotar for the time, he was yeah. overcome with doubt. Um, and Fulgen kind of speculates later on that, like, either it was knowledge that a previous powerful witch doctor had been killed so easily, um, or maybe he got tired of hearing that Vol'jin was, like, the big hero and he was just, like, the sidekick. Or maybe it was something else. But something really got to Zalazan. And he wanted power. <laughs> and it started driving him mad. Well, you know, power does that. It's, it's true. <laughs> uh, he started using dark voodoo to rob many of the dark spears of their free will. And those oh, were shit. not... Yeah, right? Those who were not affected, um, Vol'jin took them and they found Senjin Village uh, on the edge of the, like, basically just off the coast. 
So it's, it's so it's up in Durotar, not not on the islands. Okay. Um, and then, ba- basically, at this point, they completely abandoned the Echo Isles and was just like, you know what? Let's let Zalazan and his let that whole shit play out. We'll we'll be fine over here. I'm gonna go to Orgrimmar. I'm gonna be advisor to Thrall. We'll we'll be fine. It'll be good. <laughs> sure, that's what you think. It was for a while, because nothing else really happened for a while. Um, until Vol'jin finally had a plan to defeat Salazan and reclaim the Echo Isles once and for all. Uh, many members of the Horde left for Senjin Village, which served as like kind of the base camp for the liberation of the Echo Isles. Um, yeah, okay. Part of this was also Vol'jin learning that he needed to make amends to Buon Samdi, who we know very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh... Basically, killing or clearing the Echo Isles, uh, we kill Jundo the traitor, who, you know, later comes back as part of the Gurubashi, all of their stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but eventually, the Horde and Vulgin pr- uh, prove themselves worthy of Wansamdi, and yay, happy death god! Woo! And we get the Echo Isles back. Um, in, in a little bit, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Vul- Vuljin faces off with his former best friend, who then reveals that he's lured them into a trap. Uh oh. Um, after doing some more awesome mind control magic, turning the Horde and Dark Spear all against each other and the- them- themselves, he also summons a shield around himself. And then Buon is here, and he's like, "Oh, th- okay, this is pretty funny." So he raises some of the dead to go and break the shield. And therefore kills Alizane. Oh, snap. Yeah. That's what you get. Exactly. This is what you get for angering the god of death. Or right? A god, a god of death, I should say. Um, so Thrall eventually handed over the title of war chief um, leading into the Cataclysm, and he handed it over to Garrosh Hellscream. Now, we've mentioned him before, and we're not going to talk about him yet, Aside from that, he and Vol'jin didn't get along. <laughs> um, Garrosh has, like, this, like, bloodthirst about him. Like, he he always wanted war, and he kind of didn't feel like we were ever doing enough war-wise, I guess. <laughs> um, and Vol'jin's yeah, like... Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then Vol'jin's like, kind of like, okay, this is kind of bullshit. Like, calm yourself. <laughs> calm your kids, bud. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we actually see it, um, that when you level now on the Echo Isles, he actually grants you a vision of some of the stuff that's gone down between the two of them. And, uh, yeah, Garrosh is a dick. Yeah. Um, and- Well, I mean, his name is Hellscream. Well, I, we'll get into the Hellscream family at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> We have to at some point. It's just it's not gonna be yet. Um, all right, all right. But the, like, it actually makes Vol'jin really question: like, do we really belong in the Horde? And like, he was really like on the fence for a while until he talks to Thrall, um, and we get to see it too, and it's it's really great. Um, and so he has a conversation with Thrall, uh, and he ends up ultimately deciding to stay with the Horde for the good of all. Uh, and then around this time, it's also the, the this is also when Zul made his call to the various leaders, and Vol'jin was like, "Yeah, no, I'm going with the Horde." Bye. Um, and then he did travel to Quel'Thalas to warn them of the Zulaman threat, as well as to Booty Bay to warn them about the Zulgarub threat. Uh, he, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying like he's uh, doing a lot of good shit, warning all the people. Yeah. He did also play a part in the destruction of Theramore too though. Oh. <laughs> Which that that's the city that Jada founded, as a reminder. Yeah. Um Uh huh. But we'll talk more about that when we actually talk about Garrosh at some point. Um next we're gonna talk about Pandaria a little bit, but first we need to check the auction house. Oh, yeah! 
If you like what we do, consider donating through our Patreon at patreon.com slash senpaiandbambam. If you're unable to do that, we would also appreciate a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or any other podcast service you use. It helps us open up to a wider audience. You can also share us with your friends, your family, your guildies, whoever. Um, our newest oh, patron... Oh, shit. Is... Nope, you don't have to say that part. Oops. Oh, okay. I... No new patrons. We're I crying. forgot to <laughs> Cue sad violin songs. I'm sorry, I forgot to take that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, catch our Bishop about with Bam Bam series, which is available to patrons a week early and goes up weekly on Tuesdays, making your reset day a little bit better. You know, you you go open your chest and then you come back and you watch our our Mishinima. Exactly. <laughs> if you have any suggestions for that, we'll take them on Discord or by email. I'm also on Twitter if you want to tweet at me. So yeah. Also, if you want to get in touch with us over on Discord, there will be a link in the show notes on the website to join that. It's open to everyone with a patron-only section. And if you want to come out, hey, the, mm, nope, nope, we're going to try that again. Um, also, if you want to come hang out with Senpai on stream, <laughs> I, I, I usually, well, no, I'm pretty good at stuff. Um, I usually stream raids on Twitch as well as like a few other things here and there. Um, usually just WoW lately, but, uh, I mean, I'm always down to chat WoW or almost anything else, so come hang out. I feel like there's supposed to be more of the auction house, but there's not. <laughs> nope, that is everything. I'm the one that writes this. <laughs> um, check out our Instagram. I post sometimes. Yes, check out Instagram. <laughs> Lord, see that because I don't use Instagram very often, so I kind of forget to mention it ever, and I feel bad. So yeah, that's should... okay. I have a job; it's a good job. Yeah, it is, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, check us out. All right. Um, so now we're checking out Pandari. Pa Pandaria. Pandaria. <laughs> Um, there is an assassination attempt on Vulcan. Oh, shit. Yeah, as, like, as we're actually heading to Pandaria. Um, oh, man. So, Garrosh sent, they're sent by Garrosh. Oh, what a fucking dick twit. Right? I really don't like Garrosh. <laughs> I feel like this should be known. Um, so... We we find Vulgin and we we end up saving him, but he sends us to report uh, that he's dead to Garrosh, which is good. Uh, he was, however, quite uh, injured in the attempt, um, and then he's later rescued by his old friend Chen Stormstout. Um, and then, so while Vulgin is quote unquote dead, Thrall steps in to work with the Horde and the Dark Spear, because. Um, at this point, Garrosh has declared martial law on the Echo Isles and is kind of, like, oh. in charge of everything. Oh my god. Yeah. We don't like that. That's some shit. And then, so we let Thrall know, like, hey, Vulture's not actually dead, so we're okay, but don't tell Garrosh. <laughs> Alright. keep between you and me, wink, 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 Ex wink. Exactly. Just, but keep it on the mum. Keep it on down low. Um, normally, I love that DL. Absolutely. Um, so normally, trolls regenerate quickly, um, but this was actually stopped uh, for Vulcan by a certain poison on the weapons that were actually used to try to assassinate him. So Chen brings him. Wait, before that. Sorry, he's granted an audience, however, with Bwansamdi and Senjin, his father. Uh, okay. So, Bwansamdi kind of suggests that Vol'jin's drive to live at this point for his people is, is like a flaw. You know, maybe you should just instead embrace your troll nature, turn to conquest instead of securing your borders. Or maybe just, you know, pass over. And then Vol'jin was tempted by all of it, but decides instead to kind of keep going the way he was planning on going anyway. 
That's a cool idea, but I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, thanks. Pretty much. Um, which, I mean, this is Vulgit, or Bwonsamdi. I think Bwonsamdi's just kind of eternally amused. <laughs> well, that's it... good. That's a wonderful state to be in. If you're gonna be something eternally amused is, like, pretty good. I've, he does have a mean streak, with, like, which we've kind of seen in the past. Um, but... Yeah, he's usually just abused by things. <laughs> um, but he grants Vulgin a, a vision of the past when the troll, when the Zandalari were at the height of the reign of the Empire. Um, and then granted him return to the living. So la yeah. la dee da. Thanks. Yeah. Right? Oh, you want big guy? So Chen brings Vulgin uh, to the Shadow Pan Monastery to recover. Um, this is an or organization of Pandaren, mostly monks, um, and the monastery is where they do a lot of their training. Um, while there, Terran Zhu, the leader of the pa uh, Shadow Pan, um, he's not exactly cool with either Horde or Alliance, um, but okay. he'll, he allows Vulgin to stay, but he's got some conditions. Uh, there's also a human hunter there named Tirithan Court, who is, uh, he, he's also been injured and he's there to recover. Okay, is, he's not that important? Uh, kind of, a little bit. Um, basically, Terenju wants them to, like, he wants to kind of study how they interact together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since, you know, human alliance, uh, yeah. tro troll, horror. Like, he wants to study how, the how they interact together. Um, okay. They're expected to be friendly, at least. Uh, the idea being that it'll help them both heal. Yeah. Um, it it's also kind of so that T Terran Ju can actually learn a little bit more about the conflict between the two different sides. Yeah. Um, and, like, like, they're expected to, like, kind of wait on each other. Um, like, Tirithan's expected to clean all of Vulcan's linens and stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah, and it, it's neat. It's it's really neat how it plays out. It's all in the book, uh, Vulcan and Shadows of the Horde. Uh, which I'm not gonna go through all of that, because there's a stuff that we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, ha we can't talk Fine, about it. Fine, keep your secrets. We'll we'll get there eventually. I promise. It's just, but it's like it's so specific to that part and not what's going on now in WoW. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we haven't talked about it yet. We'll talk about it at some point though. Um. But yeah, they so they also do things like play. Like there's a board game that they ended up playing together. Uh, and they, they eventually come to a mutual understanding and respect, and even friendship. Um, at one point, Tirithin is actually almost killed. Uh, with, and, no, sorry, he is killed. <laughs> oh, shit! And Vulcan prays to Bonsamdi to return his spirit, which he does. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, um, and then... At some point in their becoming friends, they make a pact to avenge whichever one of them is killed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's pretty great. Um, yeah, I highly recommend going and finding that uh, either the audiobook or the actual novel and reading it. It's really good. Um, it's got some touch and shit. Yeah, it's really good. Ooh, ooh, here's hmm. a question. Hmm. Here's a question. Yes. Is there any slash? Oh, I'm sure there is. Not in that book. Remember, this game is rated T for teen. Teens? Fuck. Come on. I mean, yeah, but you're not allowed to put that out as a teen thing. Yeah, they can like, kiss and have intense eye contact. That... Uh... Sometimes you don't even need the kiss. Sometimes you just need tender care and you know intense what? eye contact. We'll get into that in not in this episode because Vulcan has a, a lady who we so? never we don't know who she is, but he he ends up ha he has kids at some point in his life again. So 
what I'm trying to say here is that Tirithan and Vulcan don't get it on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Agree to disagree. <laughs> oh, no. You can't take this headcanon from me. You know what? That's fine. So, moving forward. <laughs> Wait, so, Terra and Zoo, and what was the. And Vol'jin? Uh, Vol'jin is the troll, Tirithan is the human. Right, see, Tirithan's not on my lexicon. Do I not? Did I not put him in there? Oh no, my god. I asked, he wasn't important. He is important because he, he comes. Well, yeah, because he's got a fucking gay love arc. <laughs> He also has a wife and kids. Uh, I'm just gonna Again, put that out there. Again, like, that doesn't matter. People, like, bi is a big old spectrum. You know what? That is true. That... You can have a touching, intense co connection with a guy in a monastery and still love your wife and children. <laughs> yeah. This is fair. All right. But, moving forward, <laughs> derailing our episode completely. <laughs> Hey, you know, I gotta do it at least once an episode, otherwise what am I here for? That's true. This is your job. <laughs> Alright, so moving forward. Uh, Vol'jin finds out that Garrosh is working with the Mogu on Pandaria, as well as, uh, you know, the creepy old god stuff that we've kind of talked about before. Um, he learned that Garrosh and Lorthamar are also kind of at odds with each other. Oh, snap. And he also heard about Jaina going crazy at Dalaran and purging it of the Horde forces. All kinds of rumors. Yeah. Well, I mean, those aren't actually rumors. They're... it's true. <laughs> um, he finally returned to Senjin Village, declaring open rebellion against Garrosh. Um, and he's joined by Thrall, as well as Chen. And then uh, Lorthamar also does kind of meet up with them, but because he's busy elsewhere doing stuff really far away, he can't, like, physically join them yet. Um, but Thrall went on to find other orcs uh, who were against Garrosh as Vol'jin marched on another, vill uh, uh, another village kind of on the way to Orgrimmar. Okay. So Razor Hill ended up being, um, willingly joining Vol'jin's forces um, after they defeated Garrosh's forces. Um, and then this is also when Bane Bloodhoof joins them. Uh, this would also be about the time when the Alliance would join in with the Rebellion uh, in the Siege of Orgrimmar. So Garrosh, Garrosh had gone fully corrupt at this point. He tried to use the heart of Yasharaj, which is like, it's the old god thing that drives people mad. Yeah. I don't know why he thought this was a good thing, but whatever. So he tries to use you know, it. No, <laughs> some people like driving people crazy yeah it's like a power trip yeah i don't like this oh me neither it's always like the shittiest guys who just you know fuck with their girls and then call them crazy yeah there's there's a lot of people that do it period that's not even like really a gender thing there's there's just People, dr yeah. Anyways, but, hmm. people can be shitty. Okay, let's get out of this like little existential crisis that we're putting me in. Never. <laughs> well, let's go back to talking about Tirithin's little, little <laughs> broke back monastery moment. <laughs> you know what's funny is it's in the mountains. Oh, I know it is, cause like it's a panda monastery of course it's going to be in the mountains it's supposed <laughs> to be like modeled after tibet or something right uh i don't know if specifically tibet but yeah like it's it's a very kind of asian sort of theme but yeah all right so we work our way into orgrimmar um and we do finally bring down garrosh we don't kill him Fuck yeah oh come on we teabag him at least? I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah, you did! <sighs> months and months, years later. Um, at which point, Terenju and another Pandaren take Garrosh prisoner for a trial to be held on Pandaria. Okay. Um, so, the Horde leaders, uh, with so with Thrall, who had, he had technically left the Horde, but he's back kind of as part of the Horde, 
Um, they have a quick meeting among them, and Vol'jin is handed the title of War Chief, because Thrall is like, I'm not taking it, so here you go. <laughs> Yours by default. Congratulations, you win. Yeah, so the Alliance leaders are, like, across the room, um, and Jada's, Jada's telling Varian at this point, like, hey, right now is your chance to dismantle the Horde for everything that they've done, including, you know, the destruction of my city. How about you just go and, like, murder them all? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> murder murder most foul <laughs> basically um so varian walks over and he's he's expecting to be met with the new war chief which he's i'm i'm thinking he's expecting to be thrall okay and he's like let me see your war chief and then they all kind of part and then vulgin's just kind of standing there well stand. up guy standing hmm he's more crouched because he's that that's what vulgin does um and Varian's a little surprised, and he kind of, like, meets eyes with Thrall, and Thrall's like, yep, that's how it's going. <laughs> so then Varian kind of gives them a, a warning, like, hey, if you don't uphold honor the way Garrosh failed to, then we're gonna end you. And then he walks away. Dun-dun-dun! Mm-hmm. Uh, so during Garrosh's trial, um, Vol'jin is called to give testimony. Uh, both Alliance and Horde have leaders in charge of questioning. Which is pretty cool. Um, so this includes Vol'jin giving, uh, recalling his own threats to Garrosh, as well as the assassination attempt on Vol'jin. Well, that's good. Yeah. Gotta get both sides in there. Uh, and then we haven't fully talked about what happened here, aside from that there's the time travel and dimensional travel stuff um, that led to Garrosh oh, escaping happened. to alternate Draenor. Yeah, so Garrosh yeah. escapes. <laughs> so even though Vol'jin is war chief during all this, he doesn't go to Draenor, um, at least from the get-go. For the most part, he sends Horde forces to help the commander, who is us, um, who he later promotes to general. Uh, he does show up to help plan the invasion of Tanan Jungle, uh, but for the most part, he kind of took a backseat for the expansion. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we get back to Azeroth, though, and the Legion starts invading Azeroth again, uh, Vol'jin opens the Underhold, um, which that's where the caves uh, below Orgrimmar are, the ones that Garrosh was using to create his weapons and stuff. Um, okay. Bas he, he opened it up to provide shelter for those who could not fight, you know, the countless demons attacking. <laughs> well, that was nice of him. Mm -hmm. Protect the weak. Exactly. Like so like, you know, children, um, injured Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So then both the Horde and the Alliance lay siege to the Broken Shore at the Tomb of Sargeras, which serves as the Legion's portal into Azeroth. Vulgin leads the Horde along with Thrall to join Sylvanas and Bane up the cliffs. And they're battling demons the whole way. Um while fighting, Vol'jin is attacked by a Felguard and is dealt a very serious blow. And he's able to kill the Felguard, but he ends up collapsing and breaking a tusk. So Sylvanas sees him, rushes over to pick him up and save him. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, he he only says it loud enough for her to hear because there's just so much commotion going on. He, and he tells her, do, uh, do not let the Horde die. So she sounds a horn when she looks around, realizing that the battle's lost, and they start retreating. And then this is when the Alliance kind of just sees them walking away, and that's really all they see. Yeah. Because um, they're then overrun by the by the demons. Oh, no. But they miss the part that the Horde is also being very close to being overrun. Um, oh, so they, they just see them walking away, and they're like, you abandoned us to the demons! And I, that's what at least Gen thinks, I'm sure. But I think Varian knows better. Okay. I, th I think he understood what was going on, because that's why he sacrificed himself at the end. So they brought they brought Vol'jin back to Orgrimmar, and he's not doing well. Um, we kind of get, like, there's a really good cutscene where we, we see the energy... Um, kind of where he was stabbed 
the fell energy is actually poisoning him slowly. Oh no. And he's like he's like basically like on his deathbed here at this point. Oh shit. Um, he calls the horde leadership together and announces that the lower lower uh, the Loa were speaking to him and they were telling him that Sylvanas should would be the one to save the horde, and he names her war chief. Oh snap! So now you know why she was named war chief. Because he said so. There's that, but there's more specifically. That the Loa were speaking to him. Oh, oh, the Loa think that she's gonna be the the savior of the horde. I mean, we'll get into that pretty soon. Oh, <laughs> up, a doo. So this is when Sylvanas is like surprised, um, and so like so much so that she doesn't move during you know when they bring his body away and. Then atop his funeral pyre, she turns towards the horde and says, Who will help me avenge him? Um, which, I mean, obviously is met by cheers. Yeah. Uh, now, you well, might have... that's good. She yeah. knows how to, to sway a crowd to her favor. Sure, we'll call it good. <laughs> now, you might have guessed this isn't the end for Vulcan. No. Um, and I would say not by a long shot. I don't fully know for sure, but definitely not. Um, Master Godrin, who's the former mentor of Vulcan, um, he often felt Vulcan's spirit whispering to him from time to time after his death. Okay. Well, yeah. So once once we like make friends with the Zandalari, somebody decides to come in again. <laughs> And the Echo Isles are under attack by Zalazane. Oh no! He broke free of Buon Samdi's grasp. So, one thing I hadn't noticed until recently, because um, I was going through the, the storyline, um, when you first go to talk to Buon Samdi, there's a spirit that's like tied up and like pegged to the wall above the door of his of the necropolis yeah <laughs> and it's zalazane oh shit and i hadn't realized that i was like whoa what what what's flying past my camera and i look up oh my god <laughs> this is way too fucking funny um yeah it's great but yeah That's so he, <laughs> he ends up breaking free of of Bwazamdi. And starts attacking the uh, the Echo Isles. Uh, so Rokan, who's kind of now serving as the leader of the Dark Spear, um, asks us, the Horde Adventurers, to you know help take back the Isles once again. Yeah. Uh, and then we're also led by Master Godron himself. So Zalazane had turned himself into a lich, um, and he arrived with an army of the of undead of his own. Oh no. And, uh, so we're given Vulgin's glaive, um, since it's a magical item, and that's what we're gonna need to actually kill Zalazane. Um. Okay. It also kind of shows how great the bond between the two trolls was, um, because, like, obviously we need something of Vulgin's to kill him. Yeah. So that's good. Um. Uh, when Zalazane actually dies, he says, What? Vol'jin, you could have not have grown so strong without becoming a... Uh... And then it cuts off. Like, So, something's going on with Vol'jin. Right? <laughs> Princess uh -oh. Tal Yeah. Princess Talanji then offers to bring the ashes of Vol'jin to Ataldazar, which is the burial temple of the Zandalari kings. Okay. Um... As we journey with uh, Godrin and Talanji to bring the ashes, we're attacked by Sanfiri, Gurubashi, and Amani trolls who want to keep the ashes of a horde-loving traitor out of the temple. Okay. Yeah. Shit. Which, I mean, I think that's kind of funny because Talanji's also technically a traitor at that point. Right? Mm-hmm. So we finally get there when somebody pops up and says, wait, no. Um, I want you guys to bring that to me instead. Because apparently the absence of what 
uh, Vulgen's spirit is what actually broke the bonds holding Zalazane. Oh no. Yeah. So so we, we bring it to the necropolis and then he tries to call Vulgen out of the urn. But Vulgen's spirit isn't there. That's a little worrisome. Yeah. Um, it's missing and Blood Zombie's like, oh, the boss isn't gonna like this. Um, so he has to speak to uh, Talaji since she can communicate with the dead. Um, and she agrees to because Godron and Rokan asked her for her aid, not because the Loa insisted. Okay. Um, this is also after uh, Rastakhan made his deal with Blood Zombie, but not before Rastakhan's death. Okay. Okay. That that is a very important <laughs> note. Uh, the three of them begin a ritual to speak to the uh, spirit of Vulgen, which does work. Um, he asks us to bring justice for those lost to Cahoon, uh, and so we, we we bring his glaive over to um, basically just kind of dip it in the blood of Cahoon. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he asks us to give the glaive to Delanji saying that she is the true leader of, or true ruler of Zendalar and will eclipse even her father's reign. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, like... You go, girl! Huge spirit props there. I love it. Um, later on, Bane asks us to call, uh, to once again bring forth the spirit of Old Jin. Um, and he had seen the spirit of the warchief after the Battle of Cahoon, but he... He couldn't really find the words to speak to him yet. But he has, okay. he's, he's got some questions. So we collect the Glaive of Vul'jin, and we go with Talanji and Bane, uh, as well as Rakan and Godrin. Um, and also Spirit Walker Ebonhorn joins us for this, too. Uh, a big old group. I know, right? Um, they bring forth the Spirit of Vul'jin again, and Bane is able to ask a few questions of his former warchief. Uh, the most important of which is, I must know, when the voice spoke to you, bidding you to name her war chief, what spirit was it? Specifically in reference to the voice telling him to name Sylvanas yeah, war chief. Yeah, Sylvanas, right? Yeah. And that, oh. that, that is an actual quote. That is actually what Bane says. Um, right. He wants to know. Yeah. Uh, this is where we kind of get the beginning of something troubling. Because Vulgin doesn't remember. Uh oh. And he says that the memory is denied by the shadows, which pro then promptly attack us. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> uh, so he comments that obviously we're asking the right questions if someone is willing to kill us over it. Uh, right. We then get to go on a little journey with Vulcan. Uh First, we go to the Broken Shore to the spot where, the, where he fell in battle, hoping to kind of shed some light on what happened to him that day. Um, and we're attacked by shades again um, as we go through his memories. Uh oh. Uh, and he comments that Juan Sambi either did not hear him or was choosing not to answer the day he fell. So we're pretty sure it's not Juan Sambi at this point, I think. Yeah. Um, next, he asks us to go where he was cremated. Um, and then we join Vulgen. It kind of like in a weird shadowy sort of realm, not quite the Shadowlands, and we walk through to Gromash Hold, uh, where Vulgen had finally died. Okay. And as, as, as we walk with him, he comments along the way, he remembers dying, he remembers catching a glimpse of the other side, um, and he was expecting to see Buan Samdi or any of the other Loa, um, and he mentions both Hyreek and Shadra. Um, yeah. But there was something else there, kind of in the shadows. And it was powerful enough to whisk him away from Buon Samdi's plane. Wow. Yeah. Just he, snatched him. Yeah, and he couldn't remember where and he couldn't he couldn't tell what it was, but something was there and it's it's definitely powerful. Um but it's at this point that he's kind of realizing maybe it wasn't the Loa that wanted Sylvanas to be war chief. Maybe uh oh. It's, maybe it's something else. Something a little more sinister. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. So now it's time to go back to Bonsamdi again. 
And Vulcan asks us to be respectful when we confront the Loa, but that, you know, we kind of need to know what's going on. Uh, so we meet Talanji outside before we go in, and with a quick warning that Bonsampi is fond of humor, uh, but if you disrespect him, you're going to have a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, life or eternity. <laughs> Might not go well. Um, gonna have a bad time. Uh, Talanji also lets us know that she doesn't believe that it's Bonsamdi who whispered to Vol'jin. Um, most of the reason for this is the fact that Bonsamdi's not a fan of undead, period. And uh, Sylvanas isn't really a fan of death, so... Right. Um, so Bane and Rokan join us to speak with uh, Bonsamdi. Okay. So, um... Bane gets a bit ahead of himself at this point. <laughs> he actually ends up yelling at Bonsamdi. So, uh oh. Not very respectful. But Bonsamdi's like, alright, I'm gonna let it slide this time because I want to know what's going on too. So even he doesn't know. Um, he also mentions that he's definitely not gonna be naming Sylvanas a war chief because she has a tendency of keeping what she kills, which is upsetting the balance. So, yeah. He's not a fan of it. <laughs> Uh, but he sends us to two different powers of death, um, who are kind of like rivals, sort of, in his yeah. eyes. Uh, one of them, we haven't talked much about yet, but we will get there at some point. Uh, we are going to talk about her, though. First, we're going to talk about uh, what happens when we get to go see the Lich King. Oh, snap a doom Yep. So, Bonsamdi gives us a gateway to the top of Ice Crown Citadel, where the Frozen Throne is. Um... And Vol'jin asks if uh, if it was the Lich King's voice that he heard. And Bulvar is like, no, she threatens the balance. Why the hell would I name her that? No. <laughs> uh, but Vol'jin being trapped in our world, he doesn't exactly give us a straight answer. But he does, yeah. does say that Vol'jin w has walked on the other side and returned. And that has, he's been altered more than he knows. Oh no. So we escape before we get stuck there is one of uh, Lich King's undead ghouls. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Get out! Uh, next, we go to the leader of the Valkyr. A year. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the Valkyr before, um, partly because Arthas had them as the Lich King. Um, and he seemed to be able to create them, and we don't know how that goes, and why... Uh, the last ones that were under his control, though, sided with Sylvanas. Um, okay. But that's not where the Valkyr started. No. They, they started with one of the Titan Keepers, who we also haven't talked about yet. Okay. Um, they're specifically followers of one of the Keepers, and they ferry un uh, the dead Vrykul to their afterlife. Like, kind of oh, their okay. part of the afterlife kind of thing. Yeah. So, we go... <laughs> so we get there. With Vol'jin, Bane, and Talanji. Uh, with a warning not to mention to Bonsam not not to mention Bonsamdi. Okay. Um, Talanji being tied to Bonsamdi, she was also warned, though not specifically stated to her. Um, Ayer probably wouldn't be happy to see her, and with her being there. Yeah. <laughs> but she also still doesn't know the pact that her father made yet. So interesting. <laughs> Okay. Um, and Ayer's not. She asks, basically, how dare we bring a priestess of Bonsamdi into her halls. So there's definitely some history between Ayer and Bonsamdi that we don't know. Okay. Um, she ends up allowing just Vol'jin and his champion, so that's us, to approach her. And then Vol'jin if, asks if it was her who whispered to him the name Sylvanas is the warchief. Um, as well as if it was her doing that his spirit was sent back to the other side and then returned. Um, she mentions that Vol'jin is no longer a mere spirit, and that he's been, become something beyond her power to con to forage. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, she also mentioned that he's been touched by the hand of Valor, and that such forces don't care for mortal thrones. Ooh. Uh, but she's not willing to share who had a hand in Vol'jin's current state, though. Um, and it's not entirely clear if she just refuses to mention it because she, you know, she just doesn't want to, or maybe she doesn't know? 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Intrigue. Mm-hmm. So there, there, there's some stuff going on. Um, we head back to Ponsambi again without any kind of real answers, and Fulgen's a little frustrated by this. Uh, but he has some words of encouragement for Talanji, telling her that she's young and righteous, and uh, if she ever needs advice, she can call him on him whenever she needs. Well, that's nice. Uh, Bonsamdi, on the other hand, he's got some other words for us. Uh, he tells us that the Lich King and Ayir aren't his only rivals. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. But they were the ones most likely behind this, from what he could tell. Um, he also tells us that answers won't be found in the world of the living, and Fulgin must go beyond the veil. Well, that's intense. Mm-hmm. So we let Fulgin kind of know what's going on, and he tells us that he's off to the other side, where the living cannot follow. Um, that's also kind of where the story ends for Fulgin so far in the game. I am going to note here, there is a whole bunch of data mine stuff, though, in regards to who Bonsamdi's boss is, who might have whispered to Vol'jin, but a right, lot of- there are so many questions! Yeah, and we might know? The problem is, a lot of the stuff that's been data mined, first of all, it's spoilers, second of all, it's in- it's still from the alpha, so it might not even end up being the official lore. It might change before Shadowlands actually goes live. So I don't want to mention it specifically. <laughs> okay. Uh, but j just because, like, it could be this, or we could get something way out of fucking left field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's kind of happened before. <laughs> right? You, sometimes you think you know, but you don't. You don't know. Like, I remember in early Alpha stuff, Rathian was supposed to be in Legion. But he wasn't. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, yeah, we get a completely different Black Dragon there. Um, and then, yeah, that's where we got to in Legion. So, next, our next episode is going to be a deep dive into the new novel, Shadows Rising by Madeline Rue. Woo! I'm so excited. Oh, um, hell yeah! We're gonna talk all about that book! Mm-hmm. So that'll be next episode, which I think you're gonna like it. I am excited. Uh, so on to trivia. So, Zalazane's Fall was a huge event that is not available in-game, because uh, it happened at, like, it, it was, like, part of the pre-event to Cataclysm. Okay. So, hey, who knows? Maybe if we get Cataclysm Classic servers? Probably not. But if that ever were to ever happen, I'm, I assume that this would come back. But probably not. Um, Fulgin is one of Buon Zombie's favorites. Uh, Must be nice. I know, right? Fulgin's pride is kind of the main horde base in Talador on the alternate Draenor, and then Volmar is the main horde base in Tanan Jungle, both of which are named okay. after Fulgin. Uh, couple, there's a few forces as well named after him, including Vol'jin's Spear and Vol'jin's Headhunters. Sweet. So, Tirithin, whose name I left out of your lexicon, I feel so bad. <laughs> he watches Vol'jin's funeral from afar, and if you go and talk to him, he reveals that they were good friends, and he is going to avenge his friend. Uh... And, then and you think that they don't love each other. Mm -hmm. I, th I think there is a love. Nobody else knew about their friendship, though, on either side. Uh, I mean, you're just adding more evidence to my side. You know what? This, this is true. So later on, if you're a hunter, he's actually in the class hall uh, for hunters. Um, and he, he comments that he's thinking about lost friends. And yes, right? I, I went over on my hunter just to find him, and I'm like, oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's thinking about his love, his lost love. God damn it. Okay. Razor Hill is also where the Rebel Horde and Alliance forces would start their march against Sylvanas Windrunner. Oh, shit. Mm hmm. 
Um, and then Talanji has looked up to Vol'jin through stories that she was told as a child. So that's pretty cool, too. Right? Yeah. Wow. So voices. Uh, Vol'jin used to be voiced by Chris Metzen at one point. Um, <laughs> until patch 5.1. And that's when Dave Benoit took over. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, this also leads me to the question is, like, is there anybody that Metzen hasn't voiced at some point in this game? <laughs> He's voiced... just super capable, okay? He's voiced so many, and I think they just didn't have the budget or the cat. I don't know. Regardless. You can pay multiple people when you can pay one. That's true. Uh, we mentioned when Samdi was voiced by Dave Fenoy in the past and is now voiced by Alex Desert. Um, mm hmm Talanji is voiced by Susan Wakoma, which, like, go watch Crazy Head because it's amazing and hilarious. No, okay. Uh, she also read the audiobook for Shadows Rising. Ooh! And she has such a lovely voice. Yeah. I love her. Anyways, uh, A Year is voiced by Erin Fitzgerald, and she's done a number of other WoW voices that we haven't talked about yet. Um, okay. But she's also, she's in a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of console games and a bunch of anime that I haven't watched. Uh, but she's in Sailor Moon Crystal as Yumiko, as well as the original Sailor Moon, like, way back when, as Udeal. Oh, sweet! Yeah, I thought you might like that. But yeah, that does it for us today. We would like to thank the Winnipeg Public Library. We usually work at the Millennium Library in their beautiful Idea Mill Maker space, but in taking everyone's health and safety seriously, we are currently working from home. Yes. Um, our intro and outro music is by Kevin McLeod, and you can find all of his work on his website, Incompetech.com. Our artwork is by our good friend Ben Hoffer. His Instagram is Scorpiosoka7, if you'd like to check out more of his work. And he's opening up commissions at some point, so follow him for more info about that. He's also on Twitter now. I convinced him to get Twitter. Twitter! <laughs> so, so Mad Bodger on Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Because <laughs> I post That's most of my so stuff on Twitter, and I'm like, I can't credit you because you're not on Twitter. And now I can post well, and I can actually credit can. him. It's amazing. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, but yeah, um, and yeah, I think that's it. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I, thank you, everybody. I'm Senpai. I'm Bam Bam. And we'll notice you next time. Bye!